Good afternoon. I'd like to give you a report on the President's Day and then take whatever questions may be on your mind. The President began today when he received a 6 o'clock phone call from his National Security Advisor providing him with an overnight update on events in Iraq. The President arrived at the Oval Office at 6.55. Upon arrival, he later had his intelligence briefing, followed by an FBI briefing. He met with the Secretary of Defense. As we speak, he is having lunch with the Vice President. He will convene a Cabinet meeting later today at which the President will welcome the pool. Uh, the President, what the Cabinet meeting, will discuss the developments in Iraq, remind the Cabinet of the importance of this mission of disarming Saddam Hussein, and he will also, on the domestic front, remind Cabinet Secretaries of the importance of pushing ahead with a busy and important domestic agenda, even in the middle of international events. Uh, tonight, the President will meet with the President of Cameroon in the Oval Office, and he will dinner with the President of Cameroon. Before I take your questions, there's one item I would like to point out to you. The President would like to thank the growing number of nations that are joining the Coalition of the Willing to Disarm Saddam Hussein. As of today, there are more than 35 countries currently committed to the Coalition, and that number is growing. Contributions from na nations include direct military participation, logistical, intelligence, and political support, specialized chemi chemical and biological response teams, overflight rights, and humanitarian and other aid. Nations include, and this is just a partial list, Australia, Bulgaria, Hungary, Italy, Japan, the Netherlands, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Spain, Turkey, United Kingdom. Uh, Turkey, of course, today in their parliament voted to grant overflight rights to the United States uh, and to the coalition. It's no accident that many members of this coalition recently escaped from tyranny and oppression. And they understand what is at stake in bringing freedom and liberation to the Iraqi people as the mission of disarmament continues. All told, the population of the Coalition of the Willing is approximately 1.18 billion people around the world. The Coalition countries have a combined GDP of approximately $21.7 trillion. Every major race, religion, and ethnic group in the world is represented. The Coalition includes nations from every continent on the globe, and for this the President is grateful. And I'm happy to take your questions. Ron? Has uh, Saddam Hussein or any of his leadership been killed or captured? Uh, any questions dealing with anything operational uh, will, as was the routine in 1991, has been made clear on many occasions, be addressed by the Pentagon, not by the White House. Helen? Is there any indication that Saddam Hussein will accept ex exile, in, and is that offer still on the table? We continue to hope that Saddam Hussein will leave Iraq. We continue to hope that Iraqi generals will not follow orders. It is not too late for them to do that. It is very important that the President has said that Iraqi generals and Iraqi, Iraqi troops lay down their arms and not engage in combat. This is not their battle. This is not their war. This is a war to disarm the Iraqi regime from its weapons of mass destruction. Uh, it would be a welcome event if Saddam Hussein were still to flee. Was the mission a success? In general terms. Ron, here in the very early days, the earliest hours of the, the disarmament mission, I'm not going to provide a play-by-play -play coverage of it. The President has every confidence, as the American people do, in the men and women of our military to achieve their objective, which is to disarm the Iraqi regime. He has every confidence that will be done, but I'm just not as a general matter of principle, going to provide a daily, nightly uh, tick-tock like that. But when I say the President has every confidence, it's for good reason. Right. Bill? You've uh, emphasized the support that the coalition is getting, but there's been substantial criticism as well, particularly from President Putin of Russia. What's the response? Well, again, the President is very gratified by the growing list of nations that support the coalition's efforts. The differences that the President has had and the United States has with a few other nations are well known. Uh, there is nothing new to that. The President understands and respects the opinions of leaders like President Putin. Uh, nevertheless, that will not deter the United States and the coalition of the willing from disarming the Iraqi regime. Are you going to damage U.S.-Russian relations? No, I think that in the many conversations that President Bush has had with President Putin, the two of them have stressed that while on this issue they disagree about whether the use of force is appropriate to disarm Saddam Hussein, relations between the United States and Russia are too important for anybody to let them be damaged. The President doesn't believe they will be. No. Campbell? All right. You noted that Turkey had granted overflight rights. What did we offer Turkey in exchange for overflight rights? And Turkish troops are now moving into nor northern Iraq. 
Uh, are they working with U.S. forces in Northern Iraq? Uh, in terms of Turkey, this was a vote put to their parliament. Their parliament voted for it. Turkey, of course, is a NATO country and a NATO ally. Um, previously, there had been discussion of uh, a package of uh, aid for Turkey that was contingent on Turkey's acceptance of a total cooperation package. That did not develop, and that package is not uh, on the table, and that package will not be on the table. So we appreciate Turkey's acting as they have. I have nothing for you on, uh, on the second part of your question. Can I ask a, a, on a different subject? With the war having begun, you've said that this is essentially in the hands of the military planners, that most of the day-to-day -day stuff you'll refer to the Department of Defense. But to what extent is the president involved in decision-making on operational issues? Well, the president has given the military the broad parameters and, of course, the definition of the mission. And the mission is the disarmament of Saddam Hussein. Uh, the president then delegates to the Department of Defense the operational details of how best to accomplish that mission. Uh, the President monitors it very closely. The President speaks, as you know, repeatedly throughout the day uh, in the private meetings that I uh, mentioned um, with Secretary Rumsfeld. He receives updates from the National Security Advisor uh, throughout the day as well to ascertain whatever facts are, are the latest. He, um, he uh, asks questions to verify what progress is being made and that's the president's role. But they no longer, the military no longer would require a final go-ahead from the president now that things have been done. No, there's a war plan that has been uh, developed over a considerable period of time that the president was involved with the stages of the development of it, the approval of it throughout those stages, and now that plan is being implemented. Terry? What's the current assessment of the White House about that videotape shown in Baghdad shortly after the strike of Saddam Hussein or someone looking very much like him speaking to the Iraqi people? We have reached no conclusions about that videotape as to whether that is or is not Saddam Hussein or what time that may or may not have been pre-recorded. Uh, we've reached no conclusions. So there's a doubt as to whether or not that's even Saddam? Well, um, obviously there are two issues in play. Is it Saddam Hussein or not? We've reached no conclusions. Was it pre-taped, pre-canned? We've reached no conclusions. Okay. And then on Turkey, did you just tell Campbell that Turkish forces may be entering in Iraq? <laughs> Campbell they... said to me that Turkish forces were entering okay. Iraq. I said to her, I have nothing on that. Thank you. Uh, is part of the agreement with Turkey that they will be under the unified command structure of the coalition? Nothing has changed from any of our previous conversations on it. Steve? Through the executed order last night, sorry. Um, you know, from... Let me let me back up one step. I've been getting many questions from the press. This is appropriate at a time like this for what the, the press calls TikTok or what people understand as tell us everything that happened and every step along the way, how decisions were made, which of course is an issue of very important historical value. Um, as you can imagine, the military planners, Secretary Rumsfeld, Dr. Rice, the Vice President, the people who are in the room with the President for these meetings are focused on other things right now. They're focused on winning a war. That's their first mission, and that's where their time is being spent. Uh, I have confidence that at the appropriate time, we will have sufficient information to pass along more of a TikTok-y nature that is appropriate and, and is important uh, in this White House determination to try to provide it. Uh, but at this point, I'm very constrained in how much details I can get into as a result of what the principals are spending their time on. So, Dick? Um, does the president have any second thoughts about whether by launching a limited opportunistic strike last night against the Iraqi leadership, he gave up any of the element of surprise of the main attack or complicated its execution in any way? I believe your words were limited opportunistic strike. Uh, the president's words were the opening phase of disarmament. And that's how the president views us. This was the opening phase, the early stages of disarmament as part of a broad mission whose goal is the disarmament of the Iraqi regime. And in that mission, the president has every confidence that it will be achieved. So the answer is no. Okay.